If you're using ChatGPT for research in 2025, you're already behind. ChatGPT was awesome in the past and I loved it, but now there are better tools going forward that are specifically designed by researchers for researchers. So here are five unbelievably useful AI tools that I think you should consider putting into your AI toolkit. Oh, I'll take that, blonk. The first tool that has come on leaps and bounds in the last few months is PaperPal. PaperPal is great, but what I really like doing is using it in Word. You put the plugin or the add-in into Word and you get this bar along the side. You can see you can do everything from editing, rewriting, writing, citing research, creating outlines from templates. It's really simple. I use this outline section for the systematic review and meta-analysis outline. It said, what was your subject area, transparent electrode materials, and then describe your topic using nanocomposite solution process, transparent electrodes, inflexible devices, and solar cells. And then it spat out this outline that I can use to then formulate my own kind of like report and meta-analysis. I love how detailed it is. It's really, really a great starting point. So if you are scared of that blank page when you start doing something new, head over to PaperPal. It's got a relatively generous free option so you can start using it today for free. Oh, I love saying that. It gives me a little tingle downstairs. Oh, free. Love it. So here we have, um, yeah, a great, a great tool that every researcher should be considered using. And then we've got Translate. We can research and cite. So you can ask a question. You can search for papers. Let's expand this. That's not very easy for you. There we are. You can search papers. You can ask a question. And also you do checks. You can do checks, plagiarism checks, submission journal checks, AI review. Everything is in here that just makes writing so easy easy in Word. You don't have to copy and paste from another thing. It's right there for you. So PaperPal for academia and research, a writing tool, I think, that is unbeaten at the moment. Oh, I said it. Oh, that's a big claim, isn't it? The second tool that you should know about is Notebook LM. Now, Notebook LM is awesome for academia and research. Go check out my other article where I talk about the awesome use cases. But ultimately, here we can see if you've got a reference list, you can put it in and you can do awesome things with that reference list. You can make sure they're all selected and then you can ask a question from all of those documents. This multi-document chat was really, really expensive and uh, not common even just a few months ago. But now with Notebook LM, interrogating a load of references for a chapter of your thesis, for a peer-reviewed paper. You can put up to 50 references in there and it, you can also add, you know, Google Drive documents. You can, you know, sync it up to a Google Drive. Um, you've got link, website, YouTube, or if you have to, but you probably won't. You can just copy and paste text in. But here we have the interface. And the one thing I love about this mind map, you can go over here, have a look at mind map. And then here you can see all of the themes in your research. For example, you could upload a load of literature reviews or like a review article and get all of the things that it talks about. Look at this we click here and it opens up oh absolutely love that organic solvents phase segregated control then it gives you a little bit of a summary you can save that into a note absolutely love it and you know they do have this audio um uh overview where it like creates a little podcast it was a bit gimmicky i oh, just it just seems like a bit of a waste of time when i can scan the text and get more information than listening to those two people well i say people <laughs> those two ais blabbering on anyway um yeah notebook lm if it's not being used at the moment by you or your research team, give it a go. Now stay around because I'm going to introduce you to a tool that I've not talked about in any video so far. The third tool that you should know about is SciSpace. SciSpace has been around from day zero of the AI world and it gets better and better. This isn't sponsored, but they have sponsored previous videos and that's because I really like this tool. It is a great all-rounder. If you're going to start with one single AI tool, I recommend SciSpace because look at all of the things it can do. You can chat with PDF, you can do literature review, you can search um, the literature for relevant research topics and then you can also do AI writing, you can paraphrase, AI detector, extract data, all of this stuff just is so valuable. Quite often I find myself heading to SciSpace if I've got a normal question that I just want to answer, you know, from my daily life as a normal person, a non-YouTuber person, sometimes I am. But uh, yeah, here we have all of the stuff down here. You can see here's the references it says that I should look at. And then you can go here and you can add a column and then with AI all 
you know, if I wanted to know a summarized introduction, we can add that column and for every paper that it's found, it will do that and it's free. It has a really generous free tier that you'll be using as an academic. So why wouldn't you? Try all of this for yourself and see if you can fit it into your academic workflow. But SciSpace, oh, stop it. Stop it, SciSpace. You're still bloody good. The fourth tool that you should know about and I haven't talked about on this channel is Paper Wizard. Paper Wizard here is about getting peer-reviewed feedback on anything you're about to submit. It could be a thesis chapter, it could be a peer-reviewed paper. You get that really great review before you send it off to anyone. Absolutely love it. And you can try it for free because it gives you one free credit and that's what I've done just here. So I uploaded one of my past research papers. All you do here, a lot of amount of credits. No, 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 no. no. I'm out of credits. Anyway, I'm out of credits, but I go buy more. Um, and down here, you can see I've uploaded the document and then it says view document. And when we go there, it gives you this PDF that you can, you know, export into your own PDF reader or print out if you're that sort of person. Um, and you can see it gives you a little bit of a review of what you put in. So it gave me a manuscript summary, a review synopsis and major comments and minor comments and then references at the end from references that it's drawn from to be like, oh, this work isn't very good in these ways, just like a peer reviewer that isn't sad and mad about the world. Um, hopefully this is better, sort of like more um, objective feedback about your work than any reviewer could really do um, just because, you know, each academic that becomes a reviewer has their own little thing in the back of their mind where it's like, oh, this isn't good work because it threatens my little sort of domain area of expertise and I feel like it's going to sort of like detract from my own grant funding. All of that stuff really plays into their own uh, sort of like reviewing. So something like this could be really valuable for you before it gets to that really horrible peer review stage. Um, and you can go through and it's got major comments. Here's a critique. The study would benefit from direct characterization of the proposed buffer layer between blah, blah, blah. So it's gone into a lot of detail. It also sort of like pulls out the relevant section that it's talking about and then gives you a framework for addressing this critique. Absolutely love the fact that it's sort of like really done its best to not only give you the critique, but also be helpful in addressing the critique. Here's the major ones. And then if we scroll down, we can also have some minor ones here, experimental control and design. Here's a critique right here. So overall, you know, why wouldn't you, if you've got a little bit of spare cash or you can use your free credit, just put your paper into something like Paper Wizard to make sure that your peer reviewed paper is the best it can be before it hits the editor's desk. Love it, Paper Wizard. Go check it out for free for yourself. Not sponsored, nothing in this video is sponsored. Now stay around to the end because you'll find out what is actually better than ChatGPT for a large language model that you can start using right now. Now I said ChatGPT is a thing of the past, so what large language model should you be using for academia and research? And I think at the moment, it is this, it is Gemini 2.5. You have to pay money for this, but 2.5 Pro, this one here, has really done some incredible things. And I think that it is the best thing at the moment if you want to get references. Now, my previous video, the one sort of like two ago, something like that, I did a test where I looked at the hallucinations across literature reviews from the most popular and my most sort of like impressive uh, AI tools and agentic AIs. Gemini AI, 0% hallucination, while other ones were like 16 to 20 something percent. This is really, really great because as you can see, it gives you a load of information. I did a lot of research here. I asked it for um, generate a literature review on the topic and I gave it the topic. Please include these themes. And then down here, um, it gave me uh, a really awesome deep research with tables, with references. You can see at every paragraph, you can see where it's got it from. You can extract this and export it as a doc, like a Google doc file where it's completely referenced. It it's not the easiest to kind of like handle afterwards. You know, it doesn't like export it to Overleaf or somewhere where you've got like complete uh, control over the references in something like Bibtex or even Zotero or something like that. If you're looking for something for academia and research that doesn't hallucinate, that provides loads and loads of references and finds references that other things don't find. The one thing I loved about this is that it, th it found theses, it found peer reviewed papers, it found articles, it 
they found loads and loads of things, book chapters, that sort of like typical um, literature review searches and searches like uh, illicit and sci space just don't find. So running a deep research uh, search on literature um, in a particular field with Gemini 2.5 is probably the best thing you can do at the moment for unearthing all of the things that you would have otherwise missed. If you like this video, go check out this one where I look at all of the AI tools, rank them next to each other and tell you which ones are worth it and the ones that are complete rubbish. Go check it out.